What's up guys, this is the breakdown for the 120% speedrun route of Jock in Spyro the Dragon. Let's take a look. This level appears near the end of the run. This is the last level of Dreamweavers before you go to Nasty North. And in particular, it, these levels at this part of the point in the game are going to be very punishing for any small movement errors that you make. They will multiply tenfold into deaths and many dozens of seconds of time loss. Uh, the first main one right here is going to be with the single cake, but before we talk about this trick right here, um, I want to just examine the gem route up to this point because there are a few different ones you can take for different levels of safety. Um, this route, that overall level route that I take, is what we call the old route. Um, there is a newer, uh, slightly faster one that incorporates a difficult jump off this side pillar here that, uh, requ that basically requires you to leave it up and um, jump straight up to it using a precise flop. Saboom does that route, and I'll have a link to that in the sidebar over here. Uh, over here. <laughs> and yeah, so right here at this part, since we're not doing that, we have to lower this later, and we only get a certain amount of time to reach this platform later in the level before uh, it raises back up to this level, where you normally can't jump up to it without a precise jump like I mentioned. This means that we need to collect some of the gems here at this section early, and then some of them later. And the amount of gems that we leave for later is basically going to determine how much time we have. Um, we want to be, obviously, the more gems we leave, the more confident we need to be in our movement, the less room we have to make for mistakes. So I like to clear out the right side of this area first, the metal guy, the two gems down here, and the two boxes back here, while leaving these two boxes and this guy for later. Uh, you can opt to kill both of these guys if you don't feel super confident about like just clean up this whole area all both guys included if you don't feel super confident in your flame charge timing for enemies that are kind of that kind of necessitate it with the strat i'm using here but this is a relatively safe gem route and a, a nice middle ground i like to think and interesting you'll notice i actually didn't grab these two gems right here nowadays i do grab them just for extra safety but i this time on this run i left these two gems for later as well so it's just that's all going to be have to be cleaned up later on a timer for that platform. So this is single cake right here. And let's uh, talk about that for a little bit. So this trick, um, obviously, we only raise one part of this platform instead of both. If you flame both of the jesters here, they will uh, raise like the final middle nipple as well as this first platform. So we would call that double cake because it looks like a birthday cake. And uh, it's difficult to hit both of these guys without losing a couple seconds. You can do it as a safe strat. You know, you can keep charging around at this point and just flame the other guy just for added safety. Um, but this single cake route, if you're interested in doing it, it can be done consistently, I believe. But there are some really funky things about the movement here as well. Uh, the jumps are very precise. Um, you have to be basically facing off doing a leftwards jump, uh, curving it back to the right as you charge onto it. This is very similar to the Dark Hollow out of bounds, where if you just jump straight at it, you're usually going to bonk. But if you jump out to the left, like jump out leftwards and then crank it into the right once you're at this point. In fact, let's uh, frame advance to that point right there. As I jump out to the left, take a look. Take a look at my joystick here. So I'm here at the left, and I'm cranking it out to the left, and then middle left, and then to the right. So what this does is it helps me. You'd think that I would want to aim for the middle part of the platform right here, but what this does is it allows me to cut to uh, make the ledge more lenient. The ledge is more lenient over on this side, and we'll basically have more height by doing this out and in strat. Uh, rather than jumping straight at what looks like the lower middle part. You're going to be much more likely to bonk if you go for this middle part. Go for the outer left to the right strat. So you make it up here without bonking. You definitely want to walk this part. Uh, a jump charge will set you up really nicely to get around this side right here. So watching that in full motion, you can see I walk. And that goal, be careful, I jump charge out of the way here in order to grab this uh, cake. So just take a look at this angle of approach here. You're going to want to find your own sort of exit uh, strategy for this cave. Uh, it's easy to miss that gold gem again. So once you've collected it, you're in kind of an awkward, you have to make an awkward sort of 180 almost in order to get back around, almost like 90 degree turn uh, in order to get back out of here. But essentially, once you're looking this way, I like to not charge jump off. I like to just uh, charge off the ledge. And uh, in this particular run, I was avoiding this middle part of the cake. 
but you can totally go land in this middle part just to be aware that this is a ledge this middle nipple is a ledge so when you walk off of it you can't jump between the point that you're walking off this part and landing on this part even though the layers are both lowered they're not flat and flush with one another um also this outer part of the cake here this outer layer that i'm standing on here um the the it'll drop your let it it's not that it drops its in your input but it's not easy to extend this ledge like we do with other ledges you can jump like pretty late and spiral kind of extends his charge momentum off the side of the ledge this one's harder to do that with but you need to do it as much as possible so if you miss jumps here that show that's actually okay it shows that you're trying to extend the ledge for what is required for this jump, which is at this point, we're off this kind of where these po two polygons meet. You can even go off a little bit more leftward on this side. Um, or if you go through the middle, you could actually even jump off this part. That's fine. But we're aiming to the to this left part of the platform here. Uh, you can't really tell from this angle. Let's actually frame advance a bit. But you can see from here that this part of the platform is actually closer to you than this part. And this ledge is also very not lenient, as in it's very hard not to bonk when you charge onto it. So we need to have as much height aiming towards the left part as possible. Um, this is truly, this section is truly a test of your uh, jump and momentum conservation um, and charge glide abilities. Because without um, those three things working in tandem with one another, um, you're simply not going to make this jump and... Uh, uh, again, if you're like a newer player or you don't feel as confident with your movement, uh, I don't recommend going for this strategy because of the of the unlenient ledges. But you see, I make the charge glide and then we charge right onto the ledge. This is like basically how we maximize movement in this game. Again, just kind of looking at this all in slow motion now. We're charging off the ledge. Extend the ledge so I'm jumping as late as possible. Jumping off to the left so that we can get to the closest part of the following ledge here. Charge glide, which is a charge followed by a glide very quickly, and then you charge onto the ledge, ideally while turning in a parallel direction to the ledge to initiate to make it more of a lenient approach. Um, to you know, if you in case it is like a tough sell, you might be able to get away with like a Tony Hawk 50 50 grind, we call it, where you rub up against the lip and ideally not get bonked versus going perpendicularly. So yeah, that's the whole breakdown of that. And if that seems like way too much trouble for like the maybe three seconds it saves, um, that's very understandable. Um, I just think the movement there is really sick. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you, at this level, you want to go for it. And I think I think it's a really good test. This level, like I said, it's one of the later ones in the run. And it's a good test of your abilities at this point. Um, like the smallest error there is is certain death and like a 15 second time loss. And I think that dynamic near the end of the run where it's like, hey, you know, you can't have a run unless you're really playing on point. I, I really quite like that dynamic, to be honest. These uh, double spring chests um, can actually be these spring chests can be doubled <laughs> spoilers, but um, they're pretty far away from each other. So I usually opt not to, especially considering your entrance angle. From the ledge and from this guy's death like you can i you can ideally charge this guy and then flame charge before you hit the ground um but yeah it's just an idea it's t it, this is one of the tougher ones i don't go for it and i go for almost every double spring chest in the game so that's kind of saying something the camera here is just really tough so um in this section it looks pretty free to get especially this jump right after this first uh, platform, getting this jump. Yeah, see how I almost fell off right there? Enemies in this game, they push you when you charge them. So you'll notice that Spyro is displaced a little bit. See, I get pushed off a little bit to the left, and that almost cost me the platform right there. You can see I barely got the jump out in time by extending the ledge uh, with my charge momentum. Um, and at this point, I have no, basically no camera reference for this. You have to kind of, you basically have to YOLO it. And same thing here, you don't want to get pushed off, but I got lucky here um, that I didn't get pushed too hard by either guy. And I was able to continue the charge jump. That's the optimal movement there, but if you want to play it safe, uh, you can wait uh, or use the shoulder buttons, especially during this section. You'll notice I'm trying to use the, soldier, the, so, the shoulder buttons as much as possible here. Take a look at my input display down below here. R2, I'm just like trying to get as much R2 and now L2 to like really help. I got to help out the camera this way. 
Um, an interesting question I get sometimes is why don't I play on active camera? And while one easy answer to that question uh, is, uh, and to those who don't know, active and passive camera are two camera options you can select in the pause menu. Uh, one easy answer to that question is, is that you have to pause and select it every run. But a more, but a more accurate answer is that you can control the camera uh, more quickly using the L2 and R2 buttons uh, if you desire it to automatically center behind Spyro in a situation like this. Um, the speed at which you're going to be moving, the active camera is not going to help you enough, uh, or at least it's not going to help you as much compared to uh, L2 and R2 usage here. Um, so that's another reason why active camera isn't really necessary, is because if you incorporate L2 and R2 into normal gameplay, keep in mind um, when you charge, you don't have control over the camera, so charging and pressing L2 and R2 doesn't work. It's only when you're walking. Uh, but even in these sections where there are little shots of walking, here, using L2 and R2 gives you just that little bit of extra camera. If I wasn't using it, I wouldn't even have this 45 degree angle camera perspective. It would be more of a super against the camera and even more of a YOLO. So this is one of those situations where having uh, some camera awareness and uh, usage in this part, just in your normal gameplay, um, even on passive camera, it's it's this usage is better than active is my point. You could hear me kind of breathing there. I had to like turn down the audio. Uh, at this point, this was on my PB run, and at this point, uh, <laughs> I'm like getting very nervous. As I was saying with that other trick earlier, it's very the movement up to this point is very precise, and so you could literally hear me breathe a sigh of relief, actually, at uh, at the beginning of this fight, which we'll talk about a little bit. Just hear that real quick. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, God, my fucking heart is like racing at this point. <laughs> you can hear it again. So the thing with these uh, jumps, and I'm going to actually show, um, with these jumps, you can actually jump to the side of these platforms. There's just enough space to land. I don't show it in this clip, but you can jump just on the side of these platforms and continue a full hop into these wind tunnels. Um, that is slightly faster than jumping straight into them like this uh, because you can preserve upward momentum moving into the wind tunnel. You don't have to flame jock during this, um, I guess you would call third hit. You technically don't have to flame him. He runs away once you get into proximity of him. And then this is the true third hit right here. You only need to hit him when he's on the, when he's on the boxes, when he's on the jocks, if you will. <laughs> the jock in the box. <laughs> And the same thing with that platform right there. You can actually just jump onto the side of it. Where is it? This one? You can jump onto the... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fucking dude. <laughs> Hello, hold, let me go back a frame or two. There we go. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hey, there's our, there's our boy right there. <laughs> That's our boy. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Anyways, you can, <laughs> you can jump on the side part of the platform right here. And you have to get a little bit closer to the center to get the full hop uh, into the wind tunnel. And um, I guess I'll show that strategy somewhere on screen. Maybe. Maybe I won't, honestly. I'm a little lazy. You'll have to just watch my runs to, to see that. Hopefully I get a new world record you can watch that in. It's really not tough once you, once you practice it a little bit. Be careful with these gems. Oh my god, these fucking gems right here. It, it's so easy to go too fast at a section like this. You've been rushing through the whole level, through the whole fight at this point. Pretty much bonkless. This is like pretty nice execution at this point. And um, it's it's a heartbreaker when you don't wait for all the gems. I got lucky. Uh, Spyro manually collected, I think, like two of those gems. No, just one of them right there. Um, but it leaves Sparks to collect all three. And Sparks has trouble seeing around little corners like this. So you got to give him a, like a little bit of help. You know, just like stand there, walk it, you know, maybe you can do like some spinny action if you want. Uh, just for a moment, give Sparks a sec, you know. That's one spot if you're too hasty, you, you're just going to have to run around the whole section again. I've done it. Could have been a little bit more. You, you know, hey, just like an aside, this is a uh, example of a suboptimal dragon mash right here. You can see I ran around the front side of the dragon, so, you know, so that way uh, Spyro is closer to his... Uh, point that he needs to walk to before the dragon explodes that alone saves a second or two compared to just touching the dragon on the wrong side but have a listen to this uh to the audio here did you hear that you can hear like a, a tiny little clip from the cutscene. 
And so that signifies that the, uh, and not every cutscene starts with audio right away, but this particular one does. And it really kind of speaks volume to how uh, accurate of timing you need to have for dragons and how that can really add up. This is the 70 second dragon. There's 80 in the game. Um, if every dragon in the game was this uh, slowly mashed, um, that's like, that's, I don't know how many sec. that's definitely like many seconds of time lost over a run. Um, I don't know if that's like a dozen or like 30 or, you know, less. I mean, it all depends, right? And it, it varies basically in a run. But if you can time the dragon press uh, accurately, you're going to save a lot of time in your runs or at least a, 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 a reasonable chunk of time. So it's worth it to focus. You know, when you touch it, here's another aside, uh, an aside to the aside is when you touch a dragon, at least in my case, it's a very needed breather from very intense, like optimized movement that you're trying to do. Um, so when you hit the dragon, it's, you finally get to, you know, and just like, all right. And then just like mash, but you got to not like, for me, in my case, I got to not lose focus and like, look over at the chat and shit like that. Um, because that'll, that'll lead to a, just a barely suboptimal dragon mash. And if all my dragons are suboptimal, that's significant time loss. As I, as I mentioned. This, uh, okay. This section right here. Let's kind of just examine. So now this is like the other kind of uh, movement, like kind of execution intensive part of the level right here, um, where you're kind of tested more on your flame charging and enemy cleanup abilities at this point. Um, this section is very hard to do correctly. Uh, you need to be coming uh, at these two chests for a double flame charge. You can charge through both of them, but I highly recommend a double flame charge. So that way you're set up nicely in order to get a walk and then charge jump off of this. And this charge jump sets you up perfectly in order to get a flame charge on the first guy here. But the second one, you're you're not going to be able to flame charge. You can, It is possible to double flame charge them, but it happens so rarely. You want to just get the first flame charge on the first guy because the movement here circles back around. Go for the double spring chest. Flame charge this guy out of the air. And now at this point, I'm already pre-jumping because at this point, I don't know whether the gem fell off or not. And in this case, the gem did fall off. So what I could have done was waited and then just charged through. But instead, I, t I jumped a little early. So I just had to wait for that jump to fall. Clear it out. Use the wall to push you down here. And at this point, you want to hopefully, again, flame and turn to get the double. Fade it back. You're noticing that every time I do one of these double uh, spring chests... I hit it, but then I set it up so that I fade back. So it's like flame, turn, look at the joystick, flame, turn, and then jump and crank it back. And that, like, you got to get that first jump while the, uh, the second box is ascending, like that two box. I really want to hit that while it's ascending so that I can hit the other one before it really starts descending. You know, timing is everything and you want to ascend with the double spring chest. You know, it's like you want to pop up with them in a way. So that way you have enough time to fade back. The rest of this, we're uh, cleaning up flame charges. Now that for the flame charges on these guys aren't tough, but this one is awkward because you have to hit a double hit. You have to flame charge this guy off to the side. And then now this jokester... Uh, this jester is the one that starts the timer for the pillar that I was talking about way, way earlier in the level, which we are just starting to circle back to now. Um, if we left a lot of gems there in that section, which we did in this particular run, we would really need for all of our movement at this point, starting with this, you know, double hit. If I miss that flame charge, I'm screwed. If I miss this guy's flame charge or the next guy's flame charge, I'm screwed and I have to do the backup where you do the like tough jump like flop thing which isn't like you know the toughest thing but it is it is something it is time loss same thing with just this jester right here and also take a quick aside for these gems once you uh say you hit the double hit right here and now the next part you jump flame charge and then getting this green right here off to the right is the tough part um you have to crank your walk off to the right and then even give it, I could have even given it a little mini recharge right there just to extend Sparks' uh, grab range. Um, and then we want to hit this guy before he fully runs away. So a lot of really tight movement in that section. Let's just watch that little part right there from when we first start killing these enemies just to see how that all comes together. In fact, let's go all the way back to, uh, to this, whole, this whole bit right here. So you're coming out of the jock fight at this point. To me, this is what like an ideal section looks like. Obviously, I could have, you know, skipped the jump. Yeah, see how I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> I said that shit. 
flame charge is on point. Give it a little walk, you know, don't want to miss the green. Hit that guy before he gets away. Keeping it quick, keeping it quick. Don't want to fall off of that thing, and I bake, make it to the pillar in time. But like that, especially the reason why I think uh, I decided to stop go leaving these gems for later. It's not that you don't really have enough time, but also it's that making this jump right here and getting the blue. The blue makes this jump very precarious because A, the guy can hit you. And B, if you miss, if you hit this guy on the right hand side, like say I were to hit him a little bit more on the right side than on the left side, he would push me off of this and I wouldn't be able to recover. I'd go straight into the void. And uh, I've lost runs to that. So uh, that's another reason why you might want to grab these two gems early if you're doing this route. But either way, the we wait for the pillar to come up. Go around the dragon to touch him on the right side. Again, another suboptimal dragon touch. Well, was it? Let's see. Let's frame advance this. You can't skip the dragon at this point, but you can there. Yeah, right here, you could be skipping the dragon. So while the dragon's coming out, you can't skip him. But when he's basically, I think around this point, you can you can pretty much skip him. So this that's like about two or three frames missed right there. Not the worst dragon, but obviously not perfect either. With these guys right here, uh, if you just go for them, you're going to be too high. So what you have to do is turn... Oh, and by the way, let me just also point out that that little ledge jump that I was talking about, those two ledge jumps into the wind tunnel with the full hop that I was talking about during the jock fight, this is what that is. You jump onto the side of the ledge and then full hop into the, uh, the wind tunnel. So you can do that on the two uh, platforms like that in the jock fight itself as well, saving like a second or two. Now, coming out of this wind tunnel to the right and then to the left. And that's the key to not having too much height. If you just go straight and press left, you're going to be too high. But by going to the right and to the left, you can even pull back on the joystick if you're really scared about it. Just give it the baby, give it the quickest, tiniest pullback, but then let it come back up to neutral quickly so that you don't initiate the pullback animation. But even that much is like more risky than is necessary. You can just go right to left here. Very important to uh, keeping the height right. And then take a look at how close I'm flying to these ledges. It's very easy to get flopped off the side of these ledges. Uh, so be aware of that. Easy to fall into the lava there. I come around right to left with that uh, strategy to go counterclockwise. This wall glide is a toughie. Uh, this is definitely one of the stricter wall glides in the game. Some wall glides are quite lenient in terms of how hard you can push against them before they flop you and how much height you need before they'll uh, push you down. Uh, with this particular one, you need a lot of height, distance, height and distance, uh, and not a super harsh angle um, in order to get a consistent wall glide. If you don't, just like with the single cake strat, if you don't fully jump out here and, and charge glide at max height with not too steep of an angle, uh, you're pretty much going to get flopped every time on this uh, wall glide. So, uh, yeah, be careful. Then with this particular, this is the one um, ledge like this that is like, you know how I was saying you could jump on the side and full hop? This is the one in the entire level that you can't do that on. Maybe a task can. I was not able to figure out how to do this RTA. Don't forget about that one right there. These gems right here are actually very elusive. Look at how many just like stray gems we have here. Two on one side, uh, which, you know, that's enough. Like sparks, you know, can see that usually unless you overshoot it, which if you glide too much there, you will overshoot it. Um, this is like enough for sparks to handle, right? But then coming around this side, you have to fully walk around and get the blue. And again, if you overshoot it or you're going too quick here, it, it can be easy to miss gems. So just know that there's those, especially those reds back behind, know that they're there so that you don't have to embarrass yourself by hopping back in the wind tunnel. I like to go for the double and then just a one more jump for safety, but you can go for a triple here. Um, also, you can go for this double and then a descending um, flame glide, I guess, right? That's what it would be. So since, you're, since I'm descending right here, if I got close enough, flamed and glided, I could f theoretically flop and hit the uh, gem before I even come down to the ground. Uh, so, But that's like a lot riskier. It's a little tougher to get, especially because the uh, angle to hit these two, you're kind of far away. So uh, it is doable, though. 
and uh, it's a fun thing to go for. Um, and like I said, you can just go for like all three just in one flame and one huge fade back like that. It's another idea. Um, but with that, that's pretty much everything in Jock. Uh, guys, if you made it to the end of this um, tutorial slash breakdown slash what goes on in my head when I'm playing, uh, thank you for listening to me rant for a while. I know it's quite uh, low-key ASMR vibes perhaps at this point. And so I thank you for staying comfy with me and for taking a ride into my brain when I play 120. Um, it is a fucking amazing category, and this level really tests you and your execution abilities. And that's why I'm willing to go for some of the crazier single cake strats and why I, I definitely am considering switching over to some of the more dangerous like Wally routes and stuff like that um, that I uh, linked earlier in the run. Um and it's uh, this this game at this point, like it's it's really uh, it just gets really intense. So once again, one more time, uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the stream and have an excellent day. I love you. Chuggers for life. Cheers.